Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of 3D Printed Photography. Since I'm not using Octoprint anymore due to failed prints, um, several failed prints, uh, I've, I've pretty much given up on it on the, with the Raspberry Pi. Um, I've gone straight to printing back to SD card and I haven't had a failure since. So uh, one of the downfalls of that is I can't do time lapses with my webcam anymore, my Logitech webcam. Uh, so I've switched over to my light dial action cam. Um, and I want to show you how I do that today. There's, uh, it's a little more in depth, um, takes a little more software. You can use it with any you of know, your video editing software. Today I want to show you a virtual dub. I think that makes it pretty easy. There's a couple of tricks I can show you to make it even easier. So let's get started. Hey guys. Uh, we bought these light dial cameras, uh, they're really SJ4000 equivalent cameras I think. Uh, a couple years ago we used them in multi-camera setups, we used them outside, on hikes, all kinds of all kinds of things we use them for, but uh, today I want to show you real quick how you set one of these up in time-lapse mode. Um, first you got to go to the menu which is going to be the front button, you're going to click it until it goes through its modes until you get to menu, which is right here. And then you're going to use your arrow buttons on the side over here. And you're going to arrow down to capture mode. And that has a little camera right next to it. For capture mode, you're going to click the top button for OK. And I usually set mine to 20 second timer. So I set that to OK. And that takes it. And then I go back to my front button to get to my uh, picture taking mode that's video you can tell by the video camera up here I go to the picture taking mode right there now you can see right here I have a 20 second timer so I can set this down I can press it once and you'll see it start flickering a little every 20 seconds it'll blink which means it takes a picture so then what you do with that is you put it in Lightroom or Final Cut Pro or any of your uh, software that can render time lapses, um, Adobe Premiere, whatever, and you set all those pictures into a video. And that's all you need to do. So that's how it's done. Okay, guys, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to virtualdub.org and go to the download section. And you're going to want to download Virtual Dub. Um, I download the 64-bit version because I am on 64-bit Windows. Uh, you download the proper release for your computer. Uh, once you have that downloaded, you just extract it. Uh, it downloads into a, a zip file. And uh, you don't need to install it or anything. Everything is right here. So I, I just put it in a folder called uh, Virtual Dub, uh, the default folder name. And to start it, you just click on this VW64EXE because I have the 64-bit version. <clears throat> and then it opens up um, and there's going to be a couple things you're going to need to do um, that I'm not going to go completely through and one is you need to put all of your images into a folder so I created this uh, time-lapse 3d folder uh, on my desktop and I have copied all of my time-lapse pictures that I took with my light dial here I also created this uh, new folder called Reseek. Uh, I don't know why I named it that, I just did. But um, there's going to be a trick I'm going to show you to get all these renamed because Virtual Dub doesn't like the way these are named, even though they're in sequential order like it wants. I think the name's just too long and it, and it fails on that. So first we're going to select the first one and we're going to do a Control A and then we're going to deselect the folder. And we're going to right click, we're going to copy these, and then I'm going to go to my new folder and I'm going to paste these. Now the reason why I'm doing this is just so I don't accidentally delete things uh, and mess things up. So now I have a perfect copper in this, or, or perfect copy in this reseek folder. So now I want to select Control A again to select all of them. Then I'm going to go to this first one and I'm going to do rename, and I'm just going to type image. Now when I hit the enter key it's going to put numbers after all these and make this shorter. So now you see image one, two, three, four, five, six. Now virtual dub is going to have a better time seeing the sequence of these. So that is a really quick tip 
to get things renamed rather than trying to rename individual files. Um, so now we can go back to Virtual Dub. We go to Open Video File, and I'm already in that folder. I select the first image. Now you want to watch down here. There's zero frames selected, right? So open the first one, and it should read them all sequentially into here. There it is, up to 263 frames. So it did. Um, now I will right click, and I'm just going to set it to 12% on each of these frames just to see what it looks like uh, so you can see the whole thing rather than it zooming in. Uh, you want to do a couple other things in here before you export the video. Uh, go into video and go into filters and you're going to want to add a resize filter. Um, now I have done this before. Uh, this, these settings will not show up the same on yours so I'm going to leave this up here so you can see it. Um, you want to set uh, absolute pickle pixels. Uh, set the first one to 19 by 20, then come down here and click Compute Height From and put 16 by 9. And then down here, you want the Crop to Aspect Ratio, you also want to 16 by 9. Those are the settings you're going to want to change. And when you do that, it should look exactly like this. And then you can apply and say OK. Um, and that just uh, sets it to an HD format into uh, 16 by 9. So next you want to go to uh, video and frame rate. And you want to change your frame rate. Frame rate and I, I set mine to 24 to 30. Uh, it depends on where you're at to where you want to set it. If you're in another country, you may want to set it to 25. But 24 is the film look. 30 is the standard in the U.S. Uh, so I set that to 24 frames per second. And that's all you need to do. Then you just file. And you do save as AVI, and you can call it image1. Uh, I'm going to call it image1-2 since I already have an image1, I think. I'm going to save that, and it will process it. And you can see what it's going to look like right here as it's processing. So that's all there is to it in doing it with Virtual Dub. Um, you just got to get your uh, images in a folder, get them renamed so it sees them well. Otherwise, it'll only open one frame, and it's it's just completely messed up. So that's all there is to it. Uh, the links will be in the description for the software. Hey, guys, that's all we have for today. You can look down in the description. I'll show you where I got these uh, on Amazon. Um, you can go, I'll put a link to Virtual Dub, which is uh, in the description also, where you can download that for free and put together your time lapses. Just look for the settings I did in the video and you shouldn't have a problem. Don't forget about that trick about renaming the files on Windows. Uh, that's all we have today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.